And now I'm just going to jump down to the product variant. So let's take a look. Under Pocket Monster, we have our unnamed variant. And you can see the variant name is optional, and that's just fine to leave it blank for now. Um, the SKU suffix is what gets appended to the product SKU. So you can differentiate your variants from each other and have a different SKU for each variant. Um, so this 1, 2, 3 would actually just get appended to the end of the product SKU. So if you had multiple variants, you'd have multiple SKUs for each variant. Or, I'm sorry, a different SKU for each variant. Uh, the manufacturer part number doesn't really show anywhere on the site, but if you needed that data in there, you could add it, and you could also add that data to your product XML package if you wanted to customize it. Publish, that's just like up at the product level. Uh, you can turn uh, the variants on and off as well. Is recurring, you can, you can set up products to be recurring items um, this way. So you check yes, and then pick your recurring interval one month for example and and then that that product would be charged to the customer every month restricted quantities can be kind of handy this is a comma delimited list of restricted quantities if you have certain quantity levels that you need people to order and you you know for example you can't have three but you've got to have at least five and in groups of five you could do it this way um, and let's take a look at what that does to the product page. So now you can see your quantity box turned into a drop-down list, and you have to choose one of these options. Uh, similarly, the minimum quantity allows you to specify a minimum quantity that has to get entered. So if you had to have 100 of this product, for example, you could enter that minimum quantity, and you see the quantity starts out at that level. And if someone tries to enter just 10, they get a notice that the minimum quantity allowed is 100. So that's kind of handy. All right, the price. I think you guys know what that is. And the sale price. Those are self-explanatory. Customer enters price. That's, that's usually used for a donation type product. And I've also seen it used for gift cards. This allows the customer who's checking out to enter the price that they want. And you can also, we'll turn that on, put a prompt in front of it so that they know what they're actually entering. So we'll do that. Let's see what that does. Okay, so you can see it allows you to enter your own price. It turns the regular price off and throws this one up there. And I want a $5 item. And then you can add it to your cart. So that's good for donations and, and gift cards as well. Turn that back off. Uh, MSRP, that doesn't show anywhere on the site. Um, you could have it show if you'd like. You'd have to modify your XML package. Actual cost, same, same thing. It doesn't show anywhere, but it could if you, if you customized it. Is taxable, so this is whether or not uh, the taxes apply to this particular variant is shipped separately so you can you can mark this particular product variant as a ship separately item and what that does is if you're using real-time rates it it actually puts that item in a separate box so um, by default if a person fills their cart with products all those items are added to the same box and storefront will send UPS for example a, a request for what the shipping for that item will be and it's going to assume that all those items are in one box. Um, if you mark it is shipped separately, it'll put this particular product in a separate box and send both of those requests over to UPS and get, get a shipping rate accordingly. Um, so is free shipping 
no, yes, and no shipping required. Um, so if it's free, they'll and this is the only item in their cart, and or all the items in their cart are free shipping. On the shipping checkout page, you'll see that there's a free shipping option. If no shipping is required, and that's true of all the items in the cart, you'll skip entirely over the shipping page. Is download, so this is uh, for downloadable products. You can set that as yes, and you can put a download location in there for where your customer is gonna download that particular product from. Uh, what happens is they check out, and once they complete checkout and their credit card gets captured, then an email goes out to them, and in that email is the download location that they can click on and then download the product. The weight uh, actually will show in a few of the XML packages as well as the dimensions, but, but for the most part they are intended to be used for shipping. So this will affect your real-time rates if you set up real-time shipping. Also there's a, the option to calculate shipping by weight and this plays into that as well. Uh, current inventory. So this is obviously how many items you've got on hand and you can configure your cart to either pay attention to or ignore this value. Um, by default in storefront new items are set to have a million so obviously not really paying attention to the inventory that way. Subscription interval this is for setting up a subscription type product and this is the interval month, year, day, week you can select that there. Uh, the images tab for the variant, pretty similar to the product level. Uh, most of the product XML packages don't show variant images. Uh, it's possible to, to show them, and some of them do show them, but for the most part, you don't have to enter images for your variants. Uh, the variant description, the same is true of that. Uh, often doesn't show up on the product page unless you're you're listing out multiple variants and only some of the multiple variant XML packages will show that description. And here's your product feed information for variants if you use product feeds. Okay, this is the attributes tab. This is where you can have multiple colors for a product, so if you wanted blue, green, and brown, for example, you could enter a common delimited list of your colors. And the color skew modifier allows you to change the skew for each color. So dash blue, dash green, dash brown, like so. And the same is true of the size. Just a common delimited list of sizes, and you can enter skew modifiers for that as well. Then I'll show you what that does. So now we've got a size drop down and a color drop down. So a customer has to choose the size they want and the color they want before they add it to their cart. And these background colors on the miscellaneous tab aren't really used anywhere. Um, that's just left over from an older version. So that's it. That covers all the product fields and all the product variant fields in ASP.NET Storefront.